Honeybee13 writes, I've been a scrapper for many years and I've recently found new enthusiasm for balance. My problem is that I would usually use bits and pieces from one collection. I would love to know how to pick bits and pieces from a variety of companies and know what will work together. Any suggestions? Glittergirl, can you help Honeybee13 coordinate complementary collections? Of course I can. And this week I'm going to try something a little different and I'm going to tell you up front that I hope that it works and we'll see how we go. I've just got an order from Two Peas in a Bucket today. I'm going to open it here and then I'm going to show you my process for putting together all those different bits and pieces from different manufacturers and how I actually start to think about that from the moment I open the box and see what I order. A few um, special bits that I picked up in the sale. These stamps are an amazing deal. They're like 75% off at the moment or something completely crazy like that. And they're really nice quality wood stamps with really unique designs. So I got this one which has bunting, because I love bunting, why not? And this one, just a little something different for me, but I liked that it combined different things that I like. So it's got a little leafy floral pattern, it's got a little bird, and it has wood grain. So I thought I'd give that a try too. And because they're in the sale at such a discount, um, I figured it was uh, it was okay to take a little chance on something that maybe I hadn't used. So have a look at those. The brand's called Ink and Wit. And then I'll go through my papers first, I think. So here's everything that was in my paper packet. I have some letter-pressed uh, different sticker labels. That's from One Canoe 2, also in the sale. And some thickers label stickers and word stickers and letter stickers from October afternoon. Some new um, little sets of letters from Doodlebug and then I get into the paper and to be honest it's usually the paper that um, that starts my creative process of what I'm going to put together. So when I'm starting to mix manufacturers, I almost always start with paper first. And I tend to buy um, a few papers from one collection even though I'll mix them up. So let's have a look here. So I picked up a lot of the Love to Craft collection from uh, We Are Memory Keepers, which has all this cute um, crafty theme things. And theme things are a bit, you know, I don't use them on every single page, but I like that all the B-sides are things that are really versatile. There's chevrons and small repeating patterns, polka dots, stripes. So I look at the colors there and I can see kind of what kind of coloring I have. And then I normally pick one where I can see all the colors. And I put that one on top of the stack so that I know what I have and then I try and separate things out by manufacturer collection so I'll, I'll set that aside at the moment so now I'll look at the next little set of things in my order so this is the sweetest thing collection by my mind's eye which has some lovely reds and pinks and ooh, I like this all sorts of different things I like pieces that you can cut out so that um, definitely takes my fancy I might put that at the top so I don't forget about it and nice pieces like this, and I'm automatically thinking I'm going to cut that out. I'm not going to use it on the 12x12. I'll cut that out and use it as an embellishment. Small repeating patterns make good backgrounds. Sometimes a really bold big pattern like this works well as a background too. This was one of my favorites from looking at the thumbnails online. I like that I could throw a bunch of color on top of this. So maybe some hot pink mist and a few sheets of hot pink paper and one photo, and that would be a really fast layout that would be quite striking. So this is the sort of thing that I'm thinking when I go through my papers. And a big floral like this, I'm automatically thinking I'll want to mix with something that's a bit more subtle. So um, that's probably still too busy. Something that has less color like this, maybe. And then sometimes I really like a floral with a stripe together. And then I tend to just put a solid border around that. So maybe if I had some cardstock that matched the green, I'd just put a really tiny border around it and mix those two together. Okay, so, oh, this starts a new collection. Okay, so this is Crate. So now I'm going to have a look at all those. So I'm going to go ahead and, and leave those two together in the stack. And I think I'll put this one at the top because I really like that one. don't want to forget that I have it. So then I have, that's two collections there. Then I've got crepe papers, 
Little Bo Peep collection, which admittedly is, you would think is a baby collection, but if you look at these patterns, I don't think, oh, I only have a little bit of it. I don't think these are overly baby, I mean, they're not baby themed at all, so just nice colors, nice easy patterns to work with. And this is, oh, Pebble Sunnyside. Did I order? I have two from that collection at the moment. Okay, so a cut apart sheet and lots of thank you bits. Um, when I do make cards, they're almost always thank you cards. I make more thank you cards than anything else and then some also some birthdays. And um, so I like pieces like this where there's lots of thank you bits that I can cut apart, but it's not all thank you, so there's still other stuff that I could use. And I think there's a good mix on this sheet of things that could be both cards and scrapbook pages. So I should be able to get quite a lot out of that. And if I know that I like pretty much all of these designs, I'll probably go ahead and cut this up straight away and put it in with my die cuts rather than keep it as a pattern paper. And the only thing that does trick me with that is I do really like this background as well. And um, so I'll have a little think, but that's quite often what I do. If, if I've bought a sheet that I know I want to use it as the cut apart pieces, I'll go ahead and cut it up and put it in with my die cuts and I'm more likely to use it that way because it's the way that my creative process thinks. Even if I don't and get all the embellishments from an October afternoon collection. I'll normally get something like this where you get all these pieces that could go with any collection really because and they're they're not the the like this has lots of birthday things in it, but this is more photos, dates, look at this, things that can go with any sort of topic. And some larger sticker sheets from my mind's eye and so a flat one and a layered one, a couple die cuts. Oh, and more of those labels and words. One set of tape. Oh, and this is the one that has lots of different um, date labels. Yay. Love that. Okay, so there we go. And that comes in a set of three. The other one is yellow. There's yellow honeycomb and a gray doily lace print. Last little bit here some buttons and I don't always buy the buttons in a set like this but I look at a collection if I think I'll, um, that I don't have colors that will go with it and I looked in my button collection and I really didn't have good color matches for cakewalk so I went ahead and picked up the um, the button pack. A Christmas stamp from last year because it's in the sale now and I really like the design of this and just thought maybe that would work on my Christmas cards this year so good, good, um, good chance to get a bargain on Christmas stuff before all the new things hit the store. And this is one of the new tapes from Freckled Fawn. And it's like an olive green with little asterisks in it, little stars. Okay, so that's everything. Now where do I start with creating some page kits and figuring it all out? Okay, let's see if I can show you that. So the first thing I would do is pick a piece of paper from the box, something new, and then I just start with that. I don't have any photos in mind, and this is kind of where I start. So I picked this um, pink print from The Sweetest Thing by um, My Mind's Eye, and it has, they're both pink prints, but I like this, um, the, the lighter color with the more white in it. And then I just start to um, decide what I'm gonna go with it, and I really try not to overthink at this point. I have a few little guidelines to help me along the way and a few favorite color combinations. So I kind of go with my gut instinct. I saw the pink and maybe it was because of the, the subtle suggestion here or maybe it's just because I like this color, but I automatically decided I wanted to put this with aqua or turquoise or, or something like that. So I went looking for another print that would be just the turquoise. Um, so I've got a, a, essentially this is a, a single color print. So this is a pink and I wanted another single color print with aqua or turquoise. And this was the one that first sprung to my mind, which is um, from the Jilly Bean Soup uh, Staples. It has a polka dot on one side and a chevron on the other. But when I put these two side by side, they aren't the match that I want because this paper is more of a white tone, like the pink print is printed on a white paper. This is a cream tone and it's a very cream, so um, the, there's not a crisp white here and you can see in the label the difference between the lighter color here and the white in the, um, in the strip there. So I don't 
like to mix white and cream based pattern papers if possible. So I decided I would keep looking and I put this one aside. Still love that paper but it's just not the right choice for this particular pink. But following that same idea of something that's a very subtle single colored print, I went to the Lily B um, collection and found this print which has the subtle ledger on one side and polka dot on the other and this is from Buttercup and that doesn't have cream. It's a much better match. So now that I have two single colored prints, I want to find something that will bring that all together. And for that, this is what struck my mind, which is an older paper from Sassafras from the Sweetly Smitten collection. And I liked the idea of being able to cut out one or two of these pieces. It brings in a little more color because there's the yellow in there and the green, but it has both the pink and the aqua so I can um, bring that in. And this border strip will make a nice match too. So now I have single colored prints and a multicolored print. And for me, that's normally what really cements everything together in making a, a group of mismatched supplies really work together. From there, I like to then find smaller pieces, so journaling cards and things like that. So I picked up this one from the Everyday Eclectic collection. I've used just one of those, but there are several here that could be a good match um, depending on what I go with. And I actually really quite like the green with the green that's in here. Um, but also the map print could work well because it picks up on the aqua or I could use this shot of pink. So lots of different options there for what might work best. That's pretty much enough paper for me to get started. I might supplement with more paper from my basket of scraps as I'm creating the layout. But this would be kind of how much I would start with at the beginning. My uh, next big thing I normally go to is lettering. So I have a few different options for the lettering. I started with those same turquoise letters that I used last week from Amy Tangerine and then decided I wanted something bigger and smaller so that I would have some options. So those are those brand new doodle bug that were in the box and I've got some different sizes and shapes to work with there and also the new um, uh, pink crepe paper thickers um, in that lullaby font. This was my favorite font and I'm glad they brought it back and it always just looks really really nice and it mixes and matches with all different fonts really well. From there then normally some smaller embellishments so um, I decided I would just go ahead and start with those two that are from the same collection and then we're in the box. So I have the uh, a bit of the aqua and a bit of pink here. And when I order something that is a, an, a pricier item, not a piece of paper, but stamps, punches, things like that, I try to go ahead and stick them right into a kit straight away, get, it, get using them so that I don't forget that I have them and put them away. So um, I went ahead and pulled out that stamp set uh, to make sure I use it. And then I almost always now pull out some washi tape as I'm going, and I really love um, the hot pink polka dot and it's just it always provides a really nice shot of clean color so I've put that in there as well so that is um, the first kit that I've put together from my box and so I've got a mix there of stuff that's absolutely brand new stuff that's kind of in between and stuff that's um, getting older and, and and even discontinued so I'm starting today with the, that first kit that I put together and using that pink paper that I started everything with as my background, the 12 by 12 sheet. And then I pulled out three four by six portrait photos that I'm going to put with those. And if I use um, four by six portraits and, and three of them, I almost always would put them in a row. So I'm just gonna start with that automatically. And that gives me a really easy way into making the page. It's as if there's um, just one less thing I need to think about. So I can go ahead and get them lined up. And now I know um, that that's where I'm going to start and I have two areas that I can build. I have this smaller space at the top, bigger space at the bottom, so my bigger space is going to need to hold my journaling. Um, I could put the title either in the bigger space or I do have some empty space in the photo up here where I could have the title overlap. So once I've got um, three photos in a line, and then I try to look for things that will emphasize that. So I've cut a strip that's about two inches, I think, um, to go below that. And I wanted to use that border piece from here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. 
I'm still liking that green, and I like that it's an old camera because I'm using, uh, or the photos are about uh, using older equipment. So I'll go ahead and use that green box, and then I'll also cut out the flowers that seem to be the best fit. This gives me a pretty good structure for the bottom of the page, and then I use that to try and figure out what I want at the top of the page. So I tend to do things that are similar but smaller. So I've started with another strip of the polka dot paper. So I can add that to the top here as a little border. And then again, I want to overlap that with something pink. So I don't have another of those same strips because that was just off the paper and, and that's the whole thing. So I'll use the washi tape here and just line it up with the edge and use it like a border sticker. So I'm thinking I want something in this corner to um, balance everything that's here. It would be nice to be able to pull in this sort of color. So if I come back to this paper, this big piece would be way too much, but I could use this flower in this corner up here because it would just overlap just the very top of that picture with this corner of the page and then trim off the excess. And come back and add a little bit of ink to that bit that I just trimmed away. And now I've got a good place to start adding some horizontal, smaller horizontal elements up here. So this would be a good spot for the date, for instance. I think I'll just carry on that same technique. So flat on one side and popped on the other. Just pick up my ink again. Tuck that underneath just a bit. When I'm working on titles with mixed fonts and colors and different shapes and sizes and brands of stickers, one, one thing that I try to look for are the gaps that naturally occur in the letters. So places where you can pop one letter into the space that another letter leaves behind. So the gap here between the O and the how is a good place to start the L for lovely, um, even within one font, like the the T then has a gap where you can put the E inside and, and it kind of um, frames the letter. So that's, that's my best trick for getting all sorts of different alphabets to work together. And that's just keep looking for those natural places where things can can fit together different sizes different shapes different letters and sometimes it means that I pick a different wording for the title than I normally would and it also means that there are times when um, I spell out a letter uh, spell out a word and use up more letters than I might um, this single letter has now used two T's three E's two R's two S's I, I've pretty much obliterated that alphabet in one go and I'm gonna have to be very careful with what I can spell to use up the rest of it and but it, it works well in balance with the others and and that was the best word for me to spell in that particular font and so yeah for mixing letters and things like that that's something to look for look for if you spell one word then look for other little gaps so the T crossing here gives me a good little window to start that L and, and just keep that in mind the spaces that different letters make if I spread all of the letters out in the word letterpress it would have filled almost the whole page so it's quite key to keep them close together it's, it's similar to how we write when we don't often think about it. If you're writing joined up or cursive writing, many of the letters will naturally fit into the gaps that you've created. So now I have um, the title. I did add a little piece here from my, my little bowl of bits and pieces so that I could get um, a little bit of, of separation between the journaling place here. I'm going to put some words in here and um, where I wanted the title to read. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and add my handwriting, my journaling now, and then I'll come back in with a few little bits and pieces to finish it off. I've added a little bit of the washi tape at the bottom of the page so that that pink polka dot is repeated. And I'm going to come in with these small little word stickers. 
to bring some of the blue into that, or the, the teal into that um, area of embellishment. And I wanted to add maybe a word or two up here. So I'll do the same thing. Just pick um, a word that that fits what I've written and then add that with some little foam squares. Then I wanted to bring in that stamp set that I set aside from the beginning. Some of those little letters and I'm thinking I'll go with pink ink because I want to keep it pretty much in that same color scheme. I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm just having a look for the right color. And then I can just find little places that are good for just that small little addition. And, and then I can change up the different words and the shapes. And then I'll balance that off with maybe some little pearls or rhinestones and that'll be everything done. So just add those. Here's this page all finished and your challenge for this week is to think a little bit about your creative process. Choose a piece of paper or another product and create a little kit from it. Just pay more attention than, than perhaps you normally would to the different decisions that you make along the way. What grabs your eye and what looks balanced or, or um, or suitable to your eye and then you'll become a little more aware and it'll speed up how you work. So um, just give it a try and then share your example with however it comes out. It can be any products, any photos this week and just uh, in the comments when you upload your layout tell us a little bit about what you learned as you put together your supplies and we're paying attention to those other little details. Make it work with your style and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.